Okay, so thank you for introducing me. So, <coughs> as Sylvain said, I'm Bruno Fruchard from Telecom Biotech. And today I'm going to talk about this paper called How Memorizing Positions or Directions Affects Gestural Learning. So, for this project, I've been working on um, with Eric Le Collinet and Olivier, Ch Olivier Chapuis, my two supervisors. I'm a PhD student at Telecom Biotech. So, first, let's, let's ask a simple question that is, how to activate a command? And for that, I'm going to answer it, answer it with a simple example with the Adobe Photoshop software. So, on this software, the, the user can select commands using different ways. He can use, for example, the toolboxes on the sides of, the of this application, or he can use a more conventional way that is linear menus, as you can see here, and as you probably all know, just you can click on a menu, unroll it, and select the command inside the menu. The problem is that for novice users, it's very, it's very, it's an efficient way because they can look for the command and select it. But once they know the position of the command, it's still very slow for an expert user to find the command again. So there are other ways to uh, trigger the commands faster. You can use, for example, um, keyboard shortcuts, but it's not using the same modality as pointing. It's using another modality. So this uh, thing is not very adapted for expert users. So an approach that is used in the literature that has been evaluated is using spatially consistent interfaces. So with this kind of interfaces, here I'm showing the project called FastTap. The idea is that the commands are displayed in a grid, and so the command is uh, positioned at, uh, at um, yes, is placed at a position on the interface and won't change through time. So the idea is that the user can select the command and will implicitly learn the position of the command through time by just rehearsing the selection. And so at some point, the, the, the the, the user here can know the command implicitly using its special memory skills. So this has been shown to be efficient to select commands, but there are also other approaches that are useful for memorizing commands. And another one that is very known is using directional gestures. Here I'm showing the example of the marking menus technique. And the idea is that the user can select menus and commands using directions. Here on the left, you can see the novice mode where the user can see the commands and you can use the di direction up and right to select the menu and then the commands. And the idea is that then the user can know the gesture and perform it faster without the need to see the command. So he can just perform the gesture that you can see on the right in the expert mode and select the command faster. So again, it's using an implicit memory process and it has been shown to be efficient in the literature. Now, these two techniques, these two approaches should be efficient for memorizing, but it has not been really evaluated on this aspect. It's more for command, memory, uh, for command selection. So our question is that we have two ways of selecting comments and memorizing them here. It's using positions or directions. So the question we have is how memorizing positions or directions affects gesture learning. So for that, we built two interaction techniques. Here I'm going to show the, the, the technique using pointing, so using positional gestures. So the user can just select the menu, first display the comments using um, trigger the novice mode and display the comments, and then select the menu by just uh, raising his finger and then select a command inside the menu by just pointing on it. So simple pointing on a mobile device. The other technique is using directional gesture. Here the idea is that the user can just perform a directional gesture to select the menu and then another one to select the command inside the menu. So the techniques are quite simple and it's using two dimensions, positions or directions to memorize. So we compared them using a controlled user study. We had for that 16 participants. Um, we had two conditions, memorizing using positions or directions. And for each condition here, the participants had to um, memorize 16 commands. So overall, 32 commands. And we used also the whole set of commands was, that was 60, 64. Sorry. So we had, uh, the participants had to memorize 32 among 64 because we used, uh, we used also distractors. Okay, and the design was a within subject design and we used three sessions for that to, um, to assess and to evaluate also the long-term memory. So the task here is that we just showed a command to select and the participant had to, had to select the right command. So we used two types of phases. First, learning phases in which the participants could see the command and so they had to select the right one and memorize them. And also recall phases. In these phases, the participants did not see the command anymore. So they had to recall what they just learned before. So here is uh, the first session using different uh, several learning and recall tasks, uh, phase, phases, sorry. After one day, we did a second session with less phases. And after approximately two weeks, we did a last one to assess uh, how the users could retain information. So we had here two retention phases that are, that are really important because 
it's recall phases after, an, after a period of inactivity. So the participants did not select the comments, memorize them after one day or two weeks. And we wanted to see if they could retain the information and how, how much they could retain. Now, a detail about the experimental design is that we used some common patterns because for each menu, the participants had to memorize half of it. Okay? So we had to place the comments to memorize. I talked about distractors and comments to memorize. So here, the comments in bold are the ones to memorize, and the other are the, are the distractors. So we schematized that using um, this kind of drawing. So here, the big circles are for the comments to memorize, and the small ones, the distractors. And we use different patterns. The point here was to see if using different patterns, different positions, or directions, because here I'm showing in the case of the positions, but it's the same for directions. Okay, so you take on the left, it will be like the diagonals and the main axis where the command will be placed. And so we use different patterns to evaluate if it would change uh, user accuracy and your user recall rates. Okay, now what about the results? So here I'm showing the recall rates. The, the recall rate is the percentage of commands that were rightly selected during the recall phases. So how much the participants could, re could recall. So we can see that for, that for the first session, the participants recalled better and better to reach 77%, so a very high score. Again, here the participants had to recall 32 comments out of 64. For the second session, so one day after, we can see that they, they still recall more than half of the comments after one day, and there they can reach 81%, so again, a very high recall rate. And finally, approximately after two weeks, they can still recall half of the comments. So this shows that using this technique, using directions to memorize is very efficient. Okay, now if we compare to the other condition, so using positions to memorize, we can see that the score, the recall rate here, it's quite similar with a small advantage for the positions. Yet, we did not have a significant difference here. Um, we explained that because we had a great variability between the participants during this experiment, so that might explain why we didn't have a, a significant difference here. And also that's some participants explicitly said, one third of them explicitly said that uh, they were using the same strategies for the two conditions. So, no significant difference, but we still have some differences in, and we can show the, some benefits of using positions for memorizing. First, we can see that they allow for shorter learning times. If we look at this plot here, this histogram, we can see that, okay, so this is the display time of the comments during the learning phases. So how much time the participants saw the comments during the learning, phase, learning phases. And we can see that using the positions, they go quite faster. So they need to see the comment less to reach the same recall rate. So that's a very interesting point and a benefit of using positions. The second one is that they allow for faster learning curves. If we look at this one, so something I didn't say is that during the learning phases, the default mode was the expert mode, meaning that the participant could, did not see the comments, but they could still display. They could trigger the novice mode and see the comments. So the point here was that if they could remember the command, they could just select it without seeing, without the need to see the interface. And with that, with this design, we can see that the participants did not uh, need to trigger the novice mode uh, as much as using directions than using positions, meaning that for the positions, they, uh, re they um, relied less on the novice mode, so they didn't, they didn't need to see the command as much as with directions again. Um, another benefit is that they allow for less efforts. Here we asked, we made the participants fill some questionnaires, and we saw that for the cognitive load, the cognitive, cognitive load and the physical load, the participants ranked the positions higher. And finally, a last uh, benefit of positions is that they allow the participants to use special or visual landmarks. So I told you about the common patterns, and we can see that for one common pattern, so when the commands were placed at specific landmarks, distinct landmarks, here on the case, uh, on the, in the extreme case, uh, we can see that using positions was more efficient than using directions. And this is something very interesting because it has been shown in the literature that using, the, using landmarks is helpful in the case of positions. So we, we reproduce this result with this, um, with this result of, the, of, the, of our study. Okay, now, how can we explain these differences between the two conditions? Why do we have these differences? So first, between the two conditions, we use different visual representations. Okay, in the case of the positions, we used a rectangular representation. In the case of the directions, we used a circular representation. So here, um, maybe using the rectangular representation might help people also might help the participants to create these landmarks and to rely on the landmarks. So maybe using a different representation might change these results. So that would be something to investigate a bit more. 
A second explanation is that here we compared two interaction techniques, okay? Um, we didn't exactly learn positions and directions. Uh, the participants didn't do that exactly, but they were using the, the, the raising techniques. And this could be explained, these differences could be explained with, in, with in an artifact of the techniques, because um, here, for example, the gesture to perform the selection could have an impact also on the memorization. So that might be an explanation of these differences also. And finally, something that would be very interesting, uh, that is the last explanation we have, is that we encode different, um, um, yes, using positions or directions can be encoded differently in memory. So for example, positions, and that was the first hypothesis we had, is that it's, it's uh, relying more on the special memory skills than directions, based on the literature. So that might be also a, the, an explanation here. And so the overall results of this experiment is that in the literature, the gestures and directional gestures has been used a lot and a lot of variance has been used for that. And it has been said that it's very efficient for memorization, but we show that also using, um, using positions and using pointing is also a very efficient technique and has some benefits in our study for memorizing commands. Okay, now something else that is very interesting is that participants spontaneously use strategies for memorizing. Because here in the experiment, our only instructions was to, uh, to memorize as best as they could. And, um, but still, they spontaneously adopted some strategies. And the main one was using command grouping. 66% of the participants used this strategy. And so let me give you an example of that. If we use the, the directions condition, if two commands were on opposite directions to memorize, they could couple the two commands, and that will help them to memorize. Something interesting here is that this kind of technique using chunk of information, chunking the information, is something known to be efficient in psychology, but here the participants spontaneously used uh, this approach. Another strategy was leveraging semantic memory. So 60% of the participants used that. And again, let me, let me give you an example. In the case of the positions here, if the command to memorize was eagle on top of the menu, the participants could say eagle is up because it flies. So the idea here is that the participants could use the concept of the command to, um, to map it, to associate it to a position. And we have also some other examples. So what is interesting, again, is that they can use the concept of the command. And that, that's, again, something used in the literature that's leveraging memory, uh, uh, leveraging semantic memory. It's, it's very efficient. OK, so we perform a kind of fundamental study here. So how can we apply the results we had to uh, current interfaces and to um, how can we use that? How can we use our experiments? So for example, for the strategic command grouping, we could induce that more in our interfaces. So in our interfaces, we use some kind of command grouping using hierarchies of menu, but it could maybe be improved a bit more using more explicit groups of command, maybe smaller ones, using for example, four commands, as you can see here. And maybe even something using like an acronym with the, with the name of the commands, because that's something also that was used in, 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 with used by some participants in the experiments, but few of them, so I didn't talk about that. But they were using also that to remember a group of commands using the acronym, so they could rehearse it, and uh, it was helping them to memorize. So that could be something that, that might be improved in, uh, in the interfaces we have now, probably. Now, if you look at the other strategy used, leveraging semantic memory, how could we leverage such memory in our interfaces? The thing is, in our experiments, we used um, names of command that could rely, that could um, be used. I mean, it, it, it referred to um, concrete concepts, but in, in the interfaces, it's not always the case. We can have uh, commands that are really abstract. So one idea that, that is based on the literature in psychology could be to use peg words. So associated a concrete word to the name of a command, for example, nose for new or oven for open here, that might um, gives more materials to the participants to leverage their semantic memory here. Again, so that's just an idea that could be uh, evaluated, that would be interesting to evaluate these kind of ideas and try evaluate some new designs in our interfaces to leverage more than the memory and to help participants to memorize better. Okay, so just to sum up this talk, we performed, um, we performed a study comparing two conditions for memorizing using positional gestures or directional gestures, and we showed that using positional or directional gestures enable efficient common learning. We showed also that using positions allow for easier and faster uh, common learning, 
And finally, that the participants spontaneously elaborated strategies for memorizing, even though it was not in the instruction of this experiment. Thank you for listening, and I can now answer the questions, if you have some. Thank you very much, Bruno. We have time for questions. Hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, Juliette Romberg, uh, uh, Houston Metais Hospital and French University of Civil Aviation. Um, I was wondering, maybe you said it, if you did, I'm sorry to ask again the question. Did you look at um, the, uh, the difference, like how many, um, how many uh, items there is in the menu? And I guess, of course, it influences memorization. If there is too many items, uh, it's harder to memorize. Did you find uh, a number that's um, uh, the, the most appropriate? What's, what's the maximum number of things with the, um, a satisfying uh, memory rate? Um, just you know, to apply, if we have to apply it in an yeah. interface, how many items we should put maximum? Or yes, so here we used only two, two levels for the menus. And it was also like practical because the experiment was too long if we used more. But in the literature, there, there has been some studies using, for example, 48 items that could be memorized quite easily. The thing is, it depends on the, on the techniques used to memorize and also on the expertise of the users. So here we can see that for 32 commands uh, among 64, so we had a whole set of 64, but we use only 32 to memorize. We can see that the participants can be quite efficient with that already. Um, the thing is, there is no rationale for the number of comments. It's just that there are some studies using some, some comments. Sometimes it's less than 10, sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it can be way more. So for example, 48. In psychology, they, they can use way more than that, but again, it depends on the technique. So for that, we, we chose that. And we, it could be interesting to maybe variate this number and to see what would be the impact, yes. Okay, thank possible. you. Thanks. Okay, we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, thank you. Michael Kipp, Augsburg University of Applied Sciences. Um, I'm quite surprised. So basically you're saying positioning is better than directional in certain aspects. Uh, didn't the authors of marking menus argue that you have the motor memory involved? Yes. And so with positional you have tapping, I guess, and with yes. directional you have dragging. Yeah. So what's your take on that this doesn't apply uh, or that this doesn't increase yeah. Yeah. Uh, recall? That the fact that you can actually have, use gestures and you, as you said, you can build um, mnemonic bridges uh, using gestures. Doesn't work? Yes, so, so here the, the gestures were quite similar at the end because yeah. point, pointing in direction, so that was the, the main, the, the whole focus of the study, seeing if there, was a, if there was a difference. The thing is with this kind of memory, so using the procedural memory, using the, the, the muscle, it, it takes a lot of time to proceed and here, with just these experiments, the participants, we think that they did not um, rehearse um, enough to use this kind of memory. Because procedural memory, it's like for driving, you need a lot, lot, lot of training. And at some point, yes, you can know the commands and it can be very efficient. The thing is, it's not so clear what kind of time, what is the span of time we need to, to use this kind of memories and to, to, to make it efficient. So probably with this kind of technique, if we take it longer, maybe we'll see more differences in, way where, in one way or the other. And that could be very interesting to do. The problem is that it takes a long, long time to do this kind of studies. But that could be very interesting to, to know more because it has been used as an argument to use some techniques in, in HCI using procedural memory. But the thing is, we don't really have a rationale on how it works exactly. It's not even so clear in psychology. So we would need more information, more um, knowledge on that to really to my point of view, to really use it as a rationale and saying this is used in this case for sure after some time, for example. Okay, thank you again, Bruno.